morning, everybody. I have your upcoming events. I think first, Ms. David, like to speak to us. Um, just quickly, this Friday is the youth lock-in. Um, third grade up is welcome. If you have questions, um, come have a little chat with me. Kids need to be here at 6 o'clock if for some reason they can't be here at 6. Have a conversation. We'll, we'll, they're welcome at any time, but we're going to start everything at 6. We're going to break them into teams. Uh, we have lots of fun stuff planned. Um, I'm super excited about what? Change of clothes. Yes, they do need to bring a change of clothes. They will be getting wet. Um, so, uh, and then of course PJs, sleeping bag, pillow, that kind of good fun stuff. Um, yesterday, North Texas State Fair and Rodeo Parade. Uh, big thanks to Roy. He he flew back <laughs> overnight. I think he landed at like midnight or something. Um, and he got the trailer and the hay and we decorated. Paula and Lori picked up a bunch of decorations and we decorated and we took second place. <laughs> they followed in old red and we threw out about 50 pounds candy to kids and um, it was a lot of fun. So um, thanks to all that had anything to do with that. So um, the play day on Friday was canceled because it rained all last week. I know we needed the rain, but I needed that arena dry. <laughs> But um, so we've added a date now. September 17th is the final play day, and October, uh, the first weekend in October, will be the ice cream Sunday um, awards banquet. So all of that information, um, Dina will get out to you in the um, newsletter that goes out on Sundays. So, but yeah, so this Friday we're super excited. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, sloppy Joe's, grilled cheese, lots of fun snacks. Miss um, Gail is making us breakfast burritos. So we're super excited. But yes, change of clothes. Sleeping bag and a pillow. <laughs> Miss, you want to come? You're welcome to come. You're welcome to come and play with us. Miss Wanda, we'll throw you on a team. Uh, you know, I hope you like chocolate covered stuff. <laughs> stuff was the key word there. So, um, anyway, thank you. Thanks, Miss Dave. Wednesday at 6 45 p.m., the youth meet. 7 p.m., we have Wednesday night service. Thursday morning at 9 a.m. we have intercessory prayer. And again, Friday night, the 27th, is the youth lock-in. Saturday, August the 28th at 8 a.m., they're having the men's breakfast at the Lone Oak Cafe. Sunday, August the 27th, we will be having the Lord's Supper on Sunday morning service. Monday, September the 13th at 6.30 p.m., the women's Bible study begins at Linda Holman's house. There is a sign-up sheet back there on the table, so if you would like to join, please sign up and state whether or not you'd like a book or whatever's on there. September the 10th and the 17th, again, is play days. September the 11th, uh, there's going to be a woman's breakfast at 9 a.m. We're not sure of the whereabouts at this point. We're waiting on a, a lady to say, yes, yeah, she'd like to have it at her house, but she's waiting on details. <laughs> so we will be announcing that before. September the 18th is the men's breakfast again at 9 a.m. at the Lono. September the 19th is the Play Day Awards at 2 p.m. September the 26th, there will be a baptism here at church. Let's not forget our backpack program or our building fund. And you can send your tithes or offerings to P.O. Box 1275 in Sanger, Texas, 76266. Did I forget anything? Okay, guys, you know what time it is? Let's get up and shake some hands and have some necks, and y'all have a great day. Bye,
and you go through life, but all of a sudden, it's different, isn't it? What's happening? Hey, good stuff's coming out, right? You're not just floating along in life. You're changing what's around you, aren't you? And that's what happens when we accept Jesus. First off, we get a bowl with a hole in it. Um, but when we accept Jesus, we change the world around us. Because we have a smile on our face, even when something's going wrong. Because we know he's got us, right? And the more we start to talk about Jesus, what happens? The stronger we change that water. And the stronger we change the world around us. And what happens if we just get a whole world full of Christians? We have a lot of tea. We have a lot of tea. But you also have a whole lot of change in the world, right? And isn't that what this world needs right now? There's a whole lot of change in So I want to encourage you this week to remember that you are children of God. He made you. He picked out everything on you. So you need to go into the world and change the world around you and make it for the better. Because that's what happens when we have Jesus. Okay? Is that easy enough? Ooh, look at me. I got pop water all but she's running a fever and her all swollen. So just keep her in her prayers and Megan, because it hurts a mama's heart when your baby's sick. Sure. So pray for Rennie. Um, they don't know exactly what it is at this point, do they? Or, no. Or for sure. No, she's being tested right okay, now. Tested. <laughs> so just pray for her as she's going into the urgent care and see, what it, see what's wrong so we can get her taken care of. So. Yeah, sure. Um, my nephew, Lucas, has COVID. We're not hospitalized with quarantine. Okay, so your cousin Lucas. My, my nephew. Nephew, I'm my sorry. Nephew. Your nephew Lucas has and, COVID. So. And also, too, you know, we've been praying for Alice and Cheryl, who has been going through breast cancer. And um, I talked to Cheryl's husband last night. She did finish the radiation. And he said she, in his words, is burnt to a crisp and in a bad place. So I want to pray for her. And Alice decided not to have any more treatment, so we want to pray for her salvation. Okay. So uh, we'll just continue to pray for them. They're already on the list. We know that. So we'll continue to pray for that. And we'll pray for Lucas as well. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Paula, I think you would. Uh, just my father-in-law, he's been home for the hospital for about 30 days now, but he's not getting better. Okay. He's only progressively getting worse. His blood volume's still not going up. So we've made a decision that if he's not better by this week, we're going to take him back to the hospital. They just, they're going to do something. Okay. So Paula's father-in-law, he's not doing well. Give us his name again. Jim. Jim, okay. So continue to pray for Jim that he gets better. Um, or they're gonna have to take him back to the hospital and try to do a little bit more to try to move him along. Okay, so. Skip. Uh, continue prayer for my daughter-in-law, Carly. She still has not gotten any answers. And she's got a knot on her neck now. So she's just fighting. 
So pray for Carly. Um, she's got a place on her neck. She's not doing really well. Feeling really well. So right. Anyway, don't don't want to say we're not doing really well. We're well. She has a lot of issues going on because you know she had cancer of uh, the thyroid and they took that right. out. So it's created a whole new mountain of problems. Okay. So we will pray for her. She goes forward. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Any prayers for my brother's family, Raymond Ryan, he passed away Friday afternoon. My okay. oldest brother. For your brother's family? Raymond Riney. And Raymond Riney has passed away. Okay. Absolutely. Pray for that family. Yeah, Roy. <clears throat> Just put dad back on her. He got sick and they gave him some different antibiotics and he's not having a good time, but this is making him more sick. Okay. So pray for Roy's dad. Um, he's getting sick. So let's pray for his healing and that uh, he can do, would do a lot better coming up soon. things going on in our country, not just Afghanistan, but there's a lot of things going on that we need to pray for. Um, you know, a lot happening here that we need to pray for. And we know we have people overseas that are in bad spots, so just pray for them as well for their safety. All right. Anybody else? Okay, unspoken prayer. All right, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the love and the blessings that you show us each and every day, Father. We, we could not make it without the grace and mercy that you provide us, Lord. And we're so grateful for that, Lord. We just ask that each one that was mentioned, Father, for those who need healing, those who are sick, Father, for everything that was mentioned today, Father, we just put them in your hands. And we know that you have an answer for it, Lord. And we just pray that... Your comforting, uh, loving arms would be uh, surrounding each one of those as individuals, Father, and each one of those as a family. And, Father, for our church family, we just ask that uh, you would surround us with your love. And, Father, we just thank you for the praises that were mentioned, Father, for the things that you do for us. And, Lord, forgive us, because we don't always thank you enough. And thank you for the little things that we somewhat take for granted each and every day. And, and Father, we just uh, want to say thank you. And Lord, we just ask that you would open our hearts and our minds and our souls now as we hear your word as you speak through Ken. Father, we just pray that the words that are spoken would be embedded in our lives. We pray that we would be comforted by your word, Father, and know it is truth, and that we would be able to use it in our lives each and every day. And Father, we also pray that there's people out there that don't know the love of Jesus Christ, and we just pray for the opportunity to share it. Go with us, God, us, direct us in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. First of all, I'd like to welcome any visitors we have today. It is our pleasure... I see you guys. I want to start out with a with a, a prayer because the Lord knows I need it. Father God, I just come to you, Lord. I can come to you in need, Lord. I, I ask you to God direct me to this on the Lord. Just uh, let me be the the vessel that <coughs> speaks of your love, Lord. That might open the heart of somebody here who, who desperately needs to have a relationship with you, Lord. Just, uh, just God direct me through it. I say this in Jesus' holy name, amen. I know life's nothing but a bunch of emotions sometimes, but the sermon title is called Homecoming. Um, several years ago, my son, who 
who just came home from being overseas in a sandbox for about 11 months, was describing his reunion with his wife. They had just celebrated their first year anniversary with him there and her here. And needless to say, they both were anxious to see each other. He said that, that she was the first person he saw whenever he stepped off the bus. Then he saw his kiddos. You're home, she said. The sweetest sound he had ever heard. And his kids rushed him, all three of them trying, three of them trying to hug him at the same time, saying, Daddy, Daddy, what a joyful, tearful homecoming. And I'm sure as any of you who have ever served in the military know that feeling. If our homecoming in heaven is any better than this, I can't wait. He felt so loved and so welcome through an imperfect world, in an imperfect family, in an imperfect house. What is heaven going to be like in a perfect kingdom through a perfect father in a perfect mansion? He went on to say that he couldn't wait to get home into his own bed his own shower, his own toilet. And he couldn't wait be, be, to be with the ones that he loved. That he knew that his deployment was only temporary. He said that he read his Bible. He did his job. And even though conditions weren't the greatest, he did his best to thrive. He knew his reward was waiting for him at home. He also said the very first thing he did when he got to Texas was go to Whataburger. <laughs> he is my child. <laughs> Isn't that the same attitude we should carry with us in our daily walk with Jesus? Now I'm not saying my son's got it all figured out, but he made a commitment to the Army forever how many years he, he did that for just as we made a commitment to Christ for however many years that, that He gives us. He knew that going, He knew that going in, it wasn't going to be a piece of cake. There would be hills, there would be valleys, unpleasant living conditions like 130 over there, bad food, maybe even danger. But the thing that motivated him the most was he knew he was coming home. Being a Christian, it has its hills and valleys too. God never said it's going to be easy. In fact, he said by following him, we could be persecuted too. Last time I looked, we still have cancer hanging around. We still of joblessness and addiction. But nevertheless, in all of these bad conditions that we sometimes face, we too can thrive. Because we too know that we're going home. And just like the army prepares a soldier for their deployment, God prepares us for our deployment through His grace, love, and mercy by sending His Son to die for the forgiveness of our sins, paying that ultimate ransom for our salvation. You know, all through the Old Testament and the New Testament, God talks about heaven. In fact, in the New King James, it's mentioned 582 times. That's a lot. Most of the times it's a little short verse, it's like 1 Corinthians 2, 9, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. And down in Hebrews, instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be their God, for He has prepared a city for them. 
the writer was talking about Abraham and Sarah. They never set foot in the earthly promised land. They only saw it from a distance. It was through their faith in God that they did enter the heavenly promised land. But for me, John 14, 1 through 6, spelled it out. Jesus tells us the how and the why, just not the when. I'm a very simple guy, most of you have figured out. Most of the time, I need things in black or white. In this verse, Jesus gives them to us in red letters. And I need that. I need that comfort spelled out. And in John 14, Jesus he spells out this promise. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. You know, we just talked about this a while back. I can't remember, remember, remember when. But to have faith in God is not just to have blind faith. To believe in God just because your grandmama did. She went to church every Sunday for 80 years. The truth about faith is in this book. The Bible. It's the Word of God. And it tells us, so faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And what God doesn't lie. So when Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, He means don't worry about it. What Jesus is talking about is dying here. And isn't the prospect of dying what we, what we fear the most before we were well grounded in our faith? You know, and just a fact, just in fact, it was just a few hours after speaking these words, he was tried, he was convicted, and crucified. Yet he was more worried about comforting his disciples than his own death. My grandma, when she passed, she was a, a good Christian woman. She did not fear it. She was more concerned about her family than herself. She knew where she was going. She just wanted us to go with her. Same thing that Jesus did. Exact same thing. He, he was teaching them to the, the last breath he had. From the time we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are preparing ourselves for our time. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Prepare for heaven. Isn't that why we come here every Sunday and every Wednesday to prepare ourselves for our, our own coming? Miss Marion, she told me about a song a couple of four or five years ago maybe. It's called Celebrate Me Home. Now I can't sing or play that song worth a flip, but I've used it in several homecoming funerals. And the chorus to the song it pretty much makes my point. It says, Celebrate me home. Celebrate me there. Celebrate me in that land of wonder where nothing can Celebrate me in that place. Celebrate me saved by grace. Do not just sit there and weep because I'm gone. Celebrate me home. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Then Jesus says, trust in God, trust also in me. To me, he's saying, you believe in God enough even though you do not see him, so you believe in me too. Keep believing. 
your faith in me must not diminish just because you cannot see me. I will still be present with you. Just because you can't physically see Jesus, he's always there in the Holy Spirit. He sees your agony. He sees your pain, your hurt, your sorrow. He also sees your joy. He also sees your happiness. Because he's right there with you and in you. That is why your heart should never be troubled. Here's a quick story about trust and faith in the way of a young ball player. There was this young middle leaguer. It was the first game of the season, and his dad was, he was running late to get to the game and watch his son play because he had to work late. So he pulls into the parking lot, and he takes a look up at the scoreboard to see what he's missed. It was the top of the first, and his son's team was down 18 runs. <laughs> So he walked up behind the dugout where his son was cheering on his teammates. And he says to his son, he says, looks like we're having a tough go of it, aren't we? I know you must be disappointed. His son turns around with a big old grin on his face and he says, I'm not disappointed. We're up to bat. <laughs> As Christians, we have that same trusting faith. I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. How big is heaven? How big is heaven anyway? However big it needs to be. It's been called a country because of its vastness. It's been called a city because of the, the inhabitants. It's been called a kingdom because of the structure and order. And it's been called paradise because of its beauty. And Jesus calls it my father's house. I remember coming home from college from the first time. For the first time. I've been gone a whole probably three months. And I wanted to go back to my father's house. It was my, my home, but it was my father's house. There I was welcome, I was loved, and I could be myself. And my mom had my old bedroom made up for me. And she looked beautiful. Not only did she prepare my old room for me, she had prepared herself for me. That's what Jesus is doing for us. He is preparing our room. He is preparing himself for us. He is excited to see us as we are to see him. He anticipates our homecoming as much as we do. He promises, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. That's wanting to be with someone, amen? That when the time comes, and we don't know when, Jesus is going to come back and take us with him. He doesn't give us complicated instructions for us to follow. He carries us there. No standing in line. No bags to pack. No frustration. No traffic. No traffic jams on I-35. In an instant, we will be with Him in heaven. So what's heaven going to be like? Thank God with his son for Revelation chapter twenty one.
verse 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out from heaven, preparing a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eye. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. John chooses the most beautiful comparison earth has to offer. John says heaven is like a beautiful dress bride for her husband. What is more beautiful than a bride? I can tell you not much. My wife was never more beautiful Then she was holding mine. Underneath the marion tree in my front yard. I cannot think of a better way to describe beauty than that. I get to see a lot of it. Of course, officiating weddings. I get the first hand glimpse of just how beautiful a bride can be. I see you walking down now. No more death, no more sorrow, sickness, sin. Just love in the presence of our Lord God Jesus Christ. I think if anyone could see what heaven was like without dying, they'd live a long, miserable life here on earth and anticipate. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. I think we're all Thomases. I know I am. You know, I wanted more concrete scripture about heaven. Thomas believed in Christ just like the others did. He just didn't understand until he saw the holes in Jesus' hands and he put his head into his eye. We, like Thomas, at times doubt God. Sometimes we have to feel the heat before we can feel the faith. We have to get so far away from God that there's nothing left for us. But faith in God, and the only way up is down on your knees. But God provides for us a way to Him through the only gate that leads to Him, Jesus Christ. For all the I am's Jesus spoke, I am the water, I am the bread, I am the resurrection of life. I am the way. Sums it up best in four words. I am the way. He's all those things and more. What he's saying is, I am the way to heaven. In the here and now, you have to know the way to get to where you're going. In this scripture, in essence, Jesus says, you don't need to know the way to God. You need to know me. In fact, he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. 
That the only way to God the Father is through a personal relationship with Jesus and only Jesus. Plain and simple. Don't like I like it. And if you don't know the way, you're a lost soul. And you need to find the way. Then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. To know the truth is to know that by God's grace and His love for us, that Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin and He rose again in three days. And those who believed in Him will live eternally in heaven. That the truth will set you free from the darkness of sin in your life. That you will experience the blessings God has for you here on earth and the assurance of a heavenly home. Then the truth in your life becomes a new truth for you. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. We've all heard that saying, to die to self. It means to be born again. That when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you start a new life. The old you is gone forever. All of your sins are forgiven and you get to start new in a Christ-like life. So Jesus is alive. In other words, as sinners, we are spiritually dead. And in order to go to heaven, we must be raised from the dead and given life. And Jesus is that life. Ephesians 2, 1. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world. As for heaven, I can't wait to get there. My Father's there. My Savior's there. My home is there. My name is there. My life is there. Sometimes I wonder what I'm doing here. Trust me, Jesus says. You don't need a road map. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way to the Father. I am the truth and the life in the world and in heaven to come. Christ is everything a man needs. Everything that Adam lost, we regain in Jesus Christ. We trust His presence, His promise, His person. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and I know no greater comfort than that. If you have ever been around Miss Wanda, picking on you again, Wanda, for any length of time, most likely you have heard her say, I am homesick for heaven. Just like soldiers are who are a half a world away are homesick for home. She knows this world is not her home. That there is something better waiting for her. And she can't wait to be there. I'm going to stop picking on you now, Wanda, and I'm going to try this out. Thank you for letting me use you. Oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you for our heavenly home that, that's waiting for all believers. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have made it available to us. We pray that others that don't know you come to know you. That they become homesick for heaven as well. That they yearn to be where you are. That they confess their sins and believe in you and that their faith strengthens through their relationship with you. We pray for continued forgiveness and guidance all the days of our lives. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen.
I hope y'all have a blessed week. I know y'all blessed mine. Just to know I love you. God bless you.